Hello everyone and welcome back to Lakeside and Graham speaking. Uh, so this part of the video will be just showing you the four servos set up um, to the controller, the control board and the DCC module. Um, so this module arrived yesterday and today, uh, that was the second one which Dave posted. Uh, in replacement of the first one. And the first one actually um, arrived this morning. <laughs> so this one was posted on the 24th of November and arrived today. Brilliant post office, thank you. So I shall send that one back to Dave uh, unopened, there's no need to open it. But anyway, I now have all the components I need for getting the lock to work and the gates. So I've got the four servers, two for the water and one each for either gate. Um, so what we have now is four servos, one control board, and a DCC module. So if I start with the DCC module, it's really just a interface, if you like. Um, if you want to make your servos um, DCC, uh, you get one of these and connect it to the control board. If you don't want DCC, you want to operate them by switches, that's no problem, you just don't buy that, you just buy switches to operate and they plug into the relevant switches on the control board. So you have both options if you like. <clears throat> I've opted to go for DCC because the whole layout is DCC and I wanted to be able to operate the gates and the water from my iPad using the Z21 app. So it took me probably about an hour, I would think, something like that, to hook all this up and to program the servos into the iPad. Now, I guess it's kind of obvious, but I'll say it anyway. You're not actually programming the servos. You're programming the control board to operate the servos. Unlike the DCC concepts, um, point motors they're all kind of built in um, so you just have to plug it in wire it up <coughs> and code the actual point motor which has got the servo in it these are completely independent servos so everything goes through this control board via the DCC module now I'm not going to go into how I code this up because it's going to be boring yeah unless you've got this kind of setup it won't make a blind bit of difference um, all really we're interested in as regards this particular video is to get these working I'll briefly show tell you how there she goes again I'll briefly tell you how I set this up um, and then I think I'll call that a day after that because I say it's uh, unless you've got this set up you'll be listening to it and going well that means absolutely nothing to me um, so <clears throat> there are three main parts to the DCC controller um, sorry the Megapoints controller board um, and that is the connections here which is where the servos plug in let me get my pointy thing <clears throat> so this row of terminals here is where you plug the if I zoom in a bit there you go this row of three sets of terminals um, which there are 12 of um, is where you plug the servos in 
and so what you can have in effect for each control board you can have up to 12 servos um, at the moment I only need four um, two for the raising of the water and one each for each gate at either end so making four servos and what you can do on this magic piece of kit is that by programming um, each servo so you're programming the board um, and you're programming each one of these terminals here um, you can get a variation of speed a variation of throw um, and a variation on the position of the arm of the servo so there's three different functions that you can program in for each servo speed the distance the arm moves and the position and the position is quite important because when you mount it the position might not be quite right um, of the arm now instead of fiddling around with the arm to try and get it in the right position you can do all that via this and that is accomplished by um, these four buttons here on the bottom and there are some terminals on the side here which are for um, switches really um, but you don't have to switch it because this very last terminal here is an earth each one of these pins in this particular case 10 11 and 12 gives you the speed so if you touch with a wire or something position s10 on here and the earth you will make the servo go as slow as possible as slow as this board will allow it to this terminal the middle terminal gives it medium speed and the last terminal here s12 gives it the fast speed so with a combination of uh, and there are other switches along here so with a combination of these four buttons and those three terminals you can get the three things which I've just mentioned that's the speed the throw of the arm and the distance the, the movement so that gives you a very good initial setup um, there will be other minor tweaks obviously along the way um, but in the instructions which are very comprehensive um, it tells you all about how you set this thing up um, and your parameters and so forth. So once you've set this up, you can then go through to, um, a, and I did this without the iPad as such, I was just touching these and, and watching them go. So there was no need to actually um, use the iPad at that point. But once I was reasonably happy, that I've got each one of these servos to operate roughly to how I want it. Um, then I thought, okay, well now's the time I can enter all this onto the iPad. And that is absolutely so simple. It really is. So, if I can show you, get the light off. All I've used at the moment are three, sorry, four point uh, symbols. Um, and I've just coded those in from the control board here, the DCC control board. So when you start um, wanting to code in onto the app, <coughs> excuse me, you send a packet of information from this to the app and that gives it a an address which you can change uh, and I've changed this to 700. <coughs> oh dear, 
the T700. Um, so that's the base number, DCC address for this particular control board. The one on the elevator or the lift um, is on 600. So I won't get any um, crossovers when I operate this and the lift goes up and down. <laughs> Um, so if that is 700, then the very first um, I can't think of the word servo, the very first servo becomes number one. So you code that as 701 on your iPad. The second one, 702, 703, 704. Now that automatically gives me the numbers. This here, although there's nothing in it, I know that if I was to plug something in here, in the last one here, I would give that an address of 712, because there's 12. So it's 700 plus 12. <coughs> I need a drink of water. Um, so assuming that I've got these numbers right, so it's 701, 702, 703, 704, once I've given these symbols, those addresses, I should be able to then operate each one of these from those particular symbols. It might sound all to people do at the moment, um, but rest assured it does work. So, if I bring my iPad back in shot, hopefully, there you go, you can see that there. So you've got all the components here, you've got the control board, you've got the DCC module, and out of shot are the servos. So, this is plugged in to number one. Um, so if I operate this point, It turns. Turn it back and it goes back. So it acts like a point motor if you like. <clears throat> so if you imagine a wire going from here to a point uh, then that would operate. Likewise with number two. Here's number two. So if I press number two then that operates. And back, like so. Now the thing is, with the water, I want both these two, one and two, to operate at the same time, and they need to be going in the correct direction. <clears throat> now I haven't set those up yet, obviously, because it's not in the uh, unit I've made up. Once it's in the unit I can then orientate them correctly and then I can go back to here to this module and I can then if they're not going in the right direction um, one will be in the right direction one probably won't be in the right direction I can change this one to go in the right direction plus Although they're on two different address, addresses, 701, 702, I can make both those operate at the same time. So I don't have to have two icons here. I can just have one icon and it will change or operate both those two servos at the same time and in the correct orientation. So I can put that in any way I want in the lock um, I've built <clears throat> and I can change the orientation from here. That's handy. Um, with the gates, exactly the same. So these, if you imagine these are going to be operating the gates. I don't need these operating at the same time. I want these operating one at a time. So I will have an icon on my iPad 
for this one and an icon on my iPad for that one. So I can raise and lower each one individually. That really is about it at the moment as regards a very, very basic setup um, of what I've got so far. Now what I've got to do is to, um, I haven't built the gate yet, <clears throat> but as you know, I have built this, let's just zoom back out, Ooh, wrong way. I have built this, so now I can start putting together these two servos underneath to raise the water up and lower it, like that. Um, I've got some cable here, <coughs> metal cable, which is used for operating servos. Um, and it's, it's from Megaplant, um, yeah, from them, uh, Megapoints. Um, I, I did say Megaplants, and Megaplants <laughs> mega is a big nursery near us. Um, so it's Megapoints. Um, so I've got this from, uh, from them at the same time. So I can start utilising that, bending it up, and placing it underneath here, underneath the water, um, and mounting mounting these servos, um, and hopefully I'll be able to get this going up and down. Um, I guess probably the thing I'm going to have to consider now when I mount it is the length of the arm, <coughs> um, because. At the moment, all I know is that I need it to go up to about there and down to about there, which isn't a huge amount. <clears throat> so I think these will probably be long enough by the length of this arm. Um, that should be enough. But if not, I can just extend these arms out for now, and then I can get proper long arms if I need to. Uh, so that's about it, uh, that's about it for now I think. So the next part of the video, um, I might put this up first uh, today, um, so it doesn't become too long, um, and then hopefully tomorrow um, I will do another video where I'm hoping that I can get these two mounted underneath that lock um, and operating the water going up and down. That would be the first major step um, because then that's the water going up and down. Again, proof of concept only at the moment. It's, that, it's not the way it's going to be built, it's just proof of concept. Does it work? Hopefully yes. If not, it's back to the drawing board. But um, I, I think what I've got here is going to work. Um, I already know about I th let's correct that. I think I know already about this side to side thing where it goes like that. Um, I think I've solved that issue, uh, but I won't know until I put the servos in, of course. But I think I've got that sussed. Um, <clears throat> and then after that, once I've got the water finalised, I can then concentrate on the next stage, which is doing the gates. And again, I'm pretty up to speed on how I want to design those. So, um, yeah, I think I'll close the video off now and put this up, and then tomorrow, or possibly the day after, um, I'll do another video where um, I've actually put the servos in the lock and get that water rising. And then after that, it will be concentrating on the gates, as long as the water works, of course. So, that's it. I'm a bit like a bus really, aren't I? You don't get any videos for me from ages and then um, you get two or three coming along all at the same time. Oh, 
And one more thing before I go. <clears throat> I looked at the comments on the previous video, um, which was concerning the King Class loco. And it did sound like, when I rewound it, that I said that I bought this for Hazel. Um, I didn't actually say that, but that's how it sounded. What I did say was that I, I bought this and it's from Hazel. So, <laughs> no, I didn't buy it for Hazel. Uh, I bought it for me, but it's from Hazel. Uh, so, sorry about that, my mispunctuation, I guess. Um, so that's it, and uh, hopefully that's a little bit more of a breakthrough uh, for the lock. And hopefully I can get this thing up and running for today, or, uh, sorry, tomorrow or the day after. I've got to put some decorations up, get the tree down and so forth. Uh, so that comes first, <clears throat> and then I can get back to this. Okay, bye for now, and uh, I'll speak to you again in a day or so. Okay, bye for now.